Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on characteristics of depression. So, before we start off, just to let you know, this is the first video in a series of three. This one's going to look at introducing depression, so we'll look at the characteristics. The next one will look at explanations for depression, and then the third one will be all about treating depression. Okay? So, just very, very briefly then, uh, depression, according to the DSM-5, which is the Diagnostic Statistics Manual, uh, is classified as a mood disorder. Okay, so the DSM-5 uh, distinguishes between different types of depression, um, but all of the types of depression and depressive disorders are characterized by some form of change in mood. The major ones that the DSM-5 looks at and distinguishes between are major depressive disorder and persistent depressive disorder. The main difference between the two being that persistent depressive disorder is more longer term and or reoccurring, whereas major depressive disorder is not. Now obviously there are many many more different subtypes of depression um, but for the purposes of A-level psychology they're the two that it would be good for you to know. Okay so moving on to the characteristics um, as with phobias um, and also with OCD both of which are covered by the AQA A-level specification um, there are three different sections of characteristics. Okay, so first off, we'll have a look at the behavioural characteristics. Um, so, the behavioural symptoms of depression, um, mostly, in most patients, uh, show some kind of shift in activity level. So, for example, they might show a reduced activity level, but they might also show an increased activity level as well. Many depressed individuals experience reduced energy, for example, a sense of tiredness and wish to sleep all of the time. However, some become increasingly agitated and restless and may pace around a room, um, wring their hands, tear at their skin, and so on. Um, people also might find that their sleep is affected as well. Some people sleep much more, whereas other find it, others find it much more difficult to sleep, uh, and so sleep less. So you've got this, this um, experience of insomnia in some patients, whereas you've got this experience of hypersomnia in other patients. Appetite is something that's also very often affected. Um, some people might have a reduced appetite and not want to eat very much at all, whereas other people might eat considerably more than they would usually eat. So again, you've got changes in activity levels. On a final note, you might often find that sufferers of depression might experience quite high levels of aggression and might even experience self-harm as well. And the reason for this is that people with depression are very often quite irritable um, and that often can lead to them becoming verbally or physically aggressive. Um, and obviously this can have a knock-on effect on a number of aspects of their lives. For example, somebody experiencing depression might display verbal aggression by ending a relationship or by quitting a job, for example. Um, depression then can also lead to physical ag aggression directed at the self, which includes self-harm, uh, cutting, suicide attempts, that kind of thing. Okay, moving on then, we'll have a look at the emotional characteristics of depression. So, a, f a formal diagnosis of major depressive disorder requires the presence of at least five symptoms and must include either sadness or loss of interest and pleasure in normal activities. Um, sadness is the most common des description that people give of their depressed state, along with feeling empty. Associated with this, people may feel worthless, hopeless, and 
or experience low self-esteem. All of them are very, very negative emotions. Um, a loss of interest and pleasure in usual hobbies and activities is associated with feelings of despair and lack of control. Um, and anger is also associated with depression, um, anger directed towards others or turned inwards on the self. Um, depression may also arise from feelings of being hurt and wishing to retaliate. Um, so I've summarized those three on there of lowered mood, so extreme sadness, um, feeling empty, feeling worthless, feeling hopeless, um, anger, and then um, low self-esteem as well. Okay. And then moving on, finally, to the cognitive characteristics. The negative of emotions that are related to depression are associated with negative thoughts. Um, thoughts such as having a negative self-concept, so negative self-beliefs, as well as experiencing high levels of guilt and also experiencing a sense of worthlessness and so on. Um, Depressed people very often have a negative view of the world and expect things to turn out badly rather than turn out well. Um, they have negative expectations about their lives and relationships and just the world in general. Um, and obviously, you can imagine such expectations can also be self-fulfilling. For example, if you, if you believe that you're going to fail on an exam, that belief may reduce the effort you make um, when you're preparing for the exam. It might also increase the anxiety that you're going to experience towards the exam. And thus, all of those things can then culminate in you actually failing the exam or doing badly in the exam, which means that your belief has then actually come to pass. Um, so in general, such negative thoughts are irrational um, because they don't reflect reality or they don't accurately reflect reality. Now, it goes without saying, these characteristics are not exhaustive. There are other characteristics uh, that people with depression can experience some of them are more rare um, however the ones that we've gone across uh, gone over in this video they're the ones that are the most common again not everybody who has depression will experience all of these characteristics um, some people will experience some characteristics one time and then if they ever develop depression again they might experience other characteristics um, so it isn't a one-size-fits-all um, but these are some of the more common characteristics um, and definitely the ones that you should keep in mind when you are covering this topic. Okay, I hope that's been useful. Thank you.